G'day guys, hope you've all been doing well. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I've done a video on my, uh, on my six foot all male mixed African tank. Um, so I thought I'd do, uh, do the video now just before my water change, my weekly water change, and let you in on, uh, on a little disaster that happened um, about a week and a half or so ago. Uh, basically, for anyone who's familiar with this tank, you probably noticed that there's two uh, yellow labs that are missing. Uh, that's because I actually lost those fish uh, during, during the events of, of what happened. Um, so basically, oh man, it would have been about two, two or three weeks ago, I noticed that my fish were going really lethargic and uh, they were just sitting in the middle of the water, not really moving. Um, I did my water tests, I did, I did my ammonia test, that was fine. I did my nitrite test, that was fine. I did my nitrate test, that was okay. Um, so I wasn't having any problems there and I was thinking, you know, what, what's going on? What, you know, what's the problem? Why are, these, why are these fish just just sitting there? And so a day passes and I lose the first fish. Um, the next day, uh, I lose another fish. And then the third day, this guy here, who hasn't fully recovered, but he's, that guy there, he was upside down. He was floating around upside down. And I thought, what the, what's going on? So uh, something had to be done, quick smart, because I wasn't, you know, my water was testing, testing all right, and I thought, you know, I'm in trouble now because there's, there's a lot of money tied up in these fish, but more important than the money is the quality of fish and the size of these fish. So, you know, money can replace everything, but it's a matter of finding the fish, and that's not as easy to do, you know, not as easy to do. So, uh, you know, to get a frontosa of 30 centimeters, you know, they're not just readily available. And if you do come across them, they cost quite a bit. So you don't want to be losing fish. Um, so I thought, you know, I went on YouTube and I had a look, you know, what, what, what could the possible uh, problems be? And I came across a video, um, it uh, wasn't Tawaza Tanks, it was uh, DW Darius. And uh, he actually had a video of exactly the same problem, and I, I'm not used to doing pH tests because you know you get you get complacent, and you think you're all right, and um, you'll you know you don't think that your pH is out of order. So I, anyway, I did a pH test after watching that video, and my pH in this in this tank was uh, six. So for anyone who knows about pH, you'll know that there's a scale of uh, one to 14, seven being neutral. Anything below seven is acidic water and anything over seven is uh, alkaline water. So what was basically happening was my water was turning acid and a pH reading of six is way too low for fish. It's, uh, well, particularly African cichlids, it's way too low for African cichlids. Um, it's, you know, African cichlids are used to having, you know, 7 point, what, 7.6 or 7.8 to 8 point something, you know. So a pH reading of 6 was way too, way too low. And uh, in essence, that was killing the fish. And it had, you know, it had an almost immediate effects. Um, you know, when I say immediate effects, I'm talking within a week or so. Uh, these fish were put in there, a week was passing, and then they were starting to feel the effects of the, of the low pH. So I, had, I was faced with the problem of, you know, what do I do? I, was, I had buffer from years ago, uh, Malawi buffer, but that was all out. I didn't have enough to put in the tank. So I uh, came across in my reading, uh, my very quick and frantic reading, I came across, um, you know, an alternate remedy, which is bicarbonate soda or baking powder. So um, I basically used, I think it was, uh, for a tank this size, I dissolved about 20 teaspoons of baking soda, soda, bicarbonate soda, into water and I poured it straight into the tank. Um, you know, I wasn't 100% sure what was going to happen. Uh, I don't make it a general rule of just pouring something like that into the tank and just seeing how I go, but I was basically at the point where um, I was losing fish and I thought, well, you know, what can happen here? Um, so I basically did it and I, tested the pH about five minutes after doing it, and my pH rose to 7.6. So prior to the baking soda, the bicarbonate soda going in, I had a reading of six. I poured the baking soda in, and I got 7.6. Now, 
that's danger dangerous in of itself raising ph that quick the, you know everything you read will say don't do don't do it and i would say don't do it don't re raise ph that fast but as i say i was out of options and let's be honest the material i was reading said that that's how you safely um you safely raise ph they said add x number of teaspoons per, per gallon per liter um and then that will safely raise ph in my case you know i follow the rules and in my case i um i raised it to 7.6 immediately look touch wood i haven't had any deaths since doing that and uh what happened is almost the effects of the baking soda were almost immediate uh within an hour within an hour fish had started actually less than an hour within about 20 minutes all fish had started picking up moving again they were going from one side of the tank to the other side of the tank i was having no problems um that fish that was upside down where is he he's he's up there now he's still recovering you know he's up there he'd gone and uh he'd gone and made his right way up and um and um you know he he's slowly slowly recovering but uh, i actually had him in quarantine for a while because I, uh, I wanted to ch give him a chance for his fins to repair. It's probably been about, a, as I say, about a week and a half um, since, he's come, since he's come good, basically. But hopefully, you know, hopefully he still continues to repair. I have this other guy up here in quarantine, um, or isolation, I should say, um, because he had a, he, you know, he wasn't as bad as the other one. He wasn't upside down or anything like that, but he had his fins nipped and he had a few sores on him. And he's, he's come a lot better than what he was. So I'll probably, uh, after my water change today, I'll probably release him back into the tank and see how he goes. We've still got this guy up here in, uh, in isolation. I've extended his little, his little tunnel because uh, give him a bit more room, but um, he's aggressive. So, you know, I've got the other OB zebra down there and you probably notice that other OB zebra is chasing around that other Mbuna. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so the tank seems to be uh, slowly recovering um, after the adjustment of the pH, uh, I've since removed all the driftwood, which you probably notice because, uh, you know, they say that driftwood, they say that driftwood lowers pH, but, uh, then there's other articles that basically say it doesn't lower pH, but it will maintain an already low pH. So look, that's gone. And, um, another very important thing that I've done is I've added crushed coral. So... You can see a little bit down there on the substrate, the crushed coral, but more importantly, I've actually added that up in the filter. So there's not really that much. I just, there's a little bit here on the substrate. That's more really for decoration, if anything. But um, I've added, you know, a couple of kilos of crushed coral up in the, um, the wet dry filter on top. So all water in this tank gets passed through crushed, crushed coral. And that's basically a buffer or from what I understand, the way it works is water that passes through it, if the water's acidic, the acidic water will start breaking down the crushed coral and that crushed coral will buffer the water up to a more, um, a more desirable pH. So look, there was a disaster in this tank. I hope that it's somehow um, resolving itself. I'm not sure what caused my pH to um, become low to a degree of six, but, uh, as I say, I've removed the driftwood, but um, the lesson learned and the lesson for anyone who's watching this video is watch your pH. You get complacent, I got complacent. I thought, yeah, I've kept fish for ages, I've kept fish for years, I'm not gonna have any problems with pH. That's a, that's a rookie mistake, that's an amateur move. Like, you don't really need to, you know, as long as you're on top of your ammonia, as long as you're on top of your um, nitrites and nitrates, pH is fine. You get complacent. That's what you look at when you when you're first starting out. But this was a lesson to me. Always maintain, um, always maintain a decent pH, uh, and don't get complacent. Don't just take it for granted. Always watch it. Um, a very important, very important water parameter that needs to be that needs to be needs to be maintained, um, and it can have consequences if you don't if you don't maintain it. So. That's the lesson. Uh, take away from it what you will. But pH, very important. Very, very important. Something now that I'm testing, uh, I'm testing often. 
before I do my water changes, I put my water in the barrel from the, from the tap and uh, I do the test on it. I dechlorinate it and then I do the test on it. I make sure that it's the same pH as what's going into the tank. So my tap water comes out at about 7.6. Um, so I make sure that it's the same going into the tank as what's already in there. And if it's not, I've got my bicarbonate soda to buffer it. Very important, important lesson. So this guy here, he's up for sale now. I've got him for sale. Um, I can't keep two OB zebras in there. It's ridiculous. To be honest, I'm thinking about getting rid of the other one. They're too aggressive. I don't think they're designed for a uh, an all male uh, peacock and hap tank. They might be well with other. Look at him. They might be. They might go well with other, uh, you know, Hardy and Booners, but. Uh, they're nice looking fish, but not designed for this kind of show setup, display tank setup. You know, you're always gonna have a bit of aggression inside the tank, but you wanna limit the aggression as much as you can. You don't want it to get ridiculous and out of hand. So I'm probably just about to do a water change, uh, you know, in the next, uh, next hour or so. When I do my water change, I get rid of all this uh, algae that builds up on the tank. So I'll do a full clean. But yeah, pH, make sure you're on top of it. Don't get complacent like I did, and like other YouTubers have. All right, guys, probably do an update uh, about in a week or so, let you know how things are going. If you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, give the video a like if you like it. If you really like it, subscribe, I guess. All right, guys, see you later.